Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Clive Possell with the Realisation Group, and thank you for joining us for our webinar today on best practice approaches to reference data, cost and usage management. So without further ado, I'm going to ask the panel to introduce themselves. Mark, do you think you could possibly go first, please? Yes, thanks, Clive. Uh, my name is Mark Michels. I'm the Managing Director for the international part of the business at TRG Screen. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Amjad, over to you, sir. Thank you, Clive. So my name is Amjad Zogbi. I am one of the founders of Expansion. We founded the company in 2013, and as of January this year, we're now part of the TRG Screen Group. Um, I am Director of Business Development for Exmon, responsible for sales and partnerships. Thank you very much indeed. And Vitali, can you introduce yourself as well, please? Yes, of course. Uh, my name is Vitali Smolenov. I'm part of Metzler Asset Management and one of the users that are using Xmon actually for quite a while and <clears throat> hope and, and really, really looking forward to, to share some, some experiences on that today. Thank you very much, Vitali. Thank you to you all. Um, as you can see from the slide in front of you, we're going to have an introduction from Mark. Uh, we'll then go into some best practice around reference data cost and usage management with Amjad. And finally, we'll be having a conversation uh, with Vitali around his experiences of using Exmon and how that has helped their business. So, Mark, um, if you're happy, um, it would be great if you could go into that introduction for us, please. Yes, thank you very much, Clive. Absolutely uh, most welcome to do that. Um, and and the whole purpose of that, and I will keep it very brief, is to give some background um, as as to the the where does the subject of today's webinar fit <coughs> into um, what TLG Screen, the hosts of this webinar, uh, is all about. Uh, and as you can see on the left hand side of this slide, we do offer at TLG Screen a holistic and integrated platform um, within the center our product optimized spend, which is really where you keep all your contracts and your vendor agreements in one central repository. And that allows you to uh, proactively manage all your contracts from a renewal and a cost standpoint. Um, optimized spend is, is fully integrated with our uh, analytics and, and BI tool. And that really helps you to create all the transparency that you need, but also with your reporting. Uh, but not only that, uh, Optimized Spend is also fully integrated with your accounting and your accruals to help you with better forecasting, budgeting, and also the allocation of your costs. In addition, we do give you a full sub-ledger, which is um, where you do all your accruals for your internal and your external costs and allocations. Um, we also have a fully integrated usage management uh, tooling, and that is really um, the subject of today's webinar. We have that for reference data. That is the Xmon product, more about that later, but also for all your web-based subscriptions, which is what we handle with our research monitor application. Next to that is our risk and compliance tooling, which is really a service that helps our customers uh, with all their vendor and exchange reporting and that is really aimed at making sure you avoid any kind of potential back billing or even fines. Now, wrapped around all of these services are our managed services. Uh, we have a global team at TRG Screen of market data specialists and experts that are focused on proactively managing all your expense and undertaking all your non-core tasks. Many of us at TRG Screen have a background like our clients in market data. We have either worked as market data admin or market data managers, or uh, which is 
the case for many of us as well, we come from the vendor or the exchange side of the business. And, and wrapping this up, um, we at TRG Screen are and will remain 100% focused on market data. Uh, the financial services market space is the core of our business. That is what has our attention and that is where we want to help and serve our customers to the best of our ability. And with that, Clive, um, I think I've painted some background um, and want to hand back over to you. Thank you very much, Mark. I think that's uh, very concise and really good to hear that, you know, not only have you got great experience in the team, but you've effectively been your own customers at some point in the in the past, which is which is really useful for how you inter interact with the market. Thank you. Amjad, um, you know, some best practices around, you know, the usage and the management around market data. Yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing a bit more from you about, you know, the best practices and how things are moving in the market today. Sure, Clive, thank you, and Mark as well, thank you. Um, I'll just take 10 minutes to go through best practices um, really around reference data usage management. Um, these are things that we've seen and learned over the last 10 or so years working in the industry, um, talking to clients and uh, really following the trends there. This is, these are just a few points of the outline of the things that I'll go through today. I'll first start by defining what we mean by reference data, just to put everybody in the same page in terms of the context and the definitions. Um, talk a little bit about the general pain points that we see in reference data management. I'll then uh, take a simple view of an organization and I'll go through the practical aspects of how different teams deal with reference data and what are ultimately the consequences of poor reference data management that we see and that our clients deal with as well on a daily basis. Um, I'll then talk about organizational objectives. Why should we better manage reference data? Why it's important to be proactive when we talk about managing reference data? And finally, I'll close this part by going through the three best practices. There are more than three, but we've picked up the three ones that we think are the most important at this point. You don't um, want to run out of time with eight, 10 best practices, stick to the yeah, high level ones. That's right, that's right. Um, also, we'll, we'll touch on this in, the, in this last point, we'll touch on um, how our product Xmon helps clients achieve those and address those. Um, so that's for the outline. Uh, in terms of definitions, as I mentioned earlier, so when we mention reference data, we talk about reference data in this presentation and uh, specifically, but we'll refer to data that can be downloaded, stored, and reused in the organization. This is in contrast to data that is streaming or data that's available in feeds such as delayed feeds or real-time feeds or terminal feeds. So we're really, we're really talking about data that we can buy, store, and redistribute in the organization. There are many vendors out there providing this type of data, of course, um, and we cover a lot of a lot of them too. Now, um, most of us know this uh, reference data is expensive. Uh, it generally accounts for 10 to 30% more or less of the data budget of the general market data budget. And it can easily go into double digit millions in absolute values for, for larger companies. Uh, in addition to this, the commercial models by which this data is uh, provided are complex. Um, vendors will sell this data as a metered uh, data. It can be a pay as you go. Uh, so every time we request data, we'll be charged for it. Some vendors will have fixed deals we pay a fixed amount and then we can eat as much as we as we want. Uh, other vendors will have volume-based agreements and some vendors actually combine and have them all at the same, the same place. So it can get pretty complex here and yeah. uh, it's not a really, really not a simple way of, uh, of really understanding it in practice or the impact of that in practice. Sounds like a real challenge. Yeah, definitely. And we see this as part of the, you know, one of the, one of the most difficult things to get that they, they have, you know, our clients heads around. Um, the last part is, uh, of course, around the licensing and compliance and usage uh, itself. Uh, we need to be sure that we are using data correctly. At least this is the, the onus is on the client to do that. Um, there are usage agreements, there are contracts in place to, to say what a client can and cannot do with the data itself, but it's completely on the client's onus to do or responsibility, responsibility to actually uh, make sure that they are compliant with their agreements. Um, 
it's very complex here in terms of the usage agreements themselves, but also some uh, there are aggregators of data that will provide the data, and then the, it's up to the client to know where that data is originating from and uh, and and report it back to the right uh, to the right source. So it is a very complex overall uh, management of of usage, spend, and commercials. I think what you're really saying there is buyer beware. Yeah. Now, the, the, generally what we see as well, and we think fundamentally the problem there is that uh, in most cases, reference data in organizations is passively managed, which, which means clients will get the invoices at the end of the month. They might get some form of usage reports, but it is a passive way. Uh, they wait until the end of the month. They look at the invoices. The invoices are paid. They might get calls from vendors or, or data aggregators and saying, you need to report on this, you need to report on that. But fundamentally, it is a passive way of managing reference data. And we think this is one of the, uh, one of the reasons why the, the landscape is so hard to deal with. And we'll talk about this in a bit uh, a bit later, but um, with Exmo, with our products and our way of seeing things, we, we change that dynamic from a passive position to a more proactive tracking. And we think this is very important uh, to do. Now, what I've put up in this slide here is just a typical view, maybe a simplified view of, of, of an organization. Um, what we make it as, as a distinction for us is is two things. We think it's important to distinguish between managing usage and spend, which is um, on the right-hand side here, and managing data itself, which is on the on the left-hand side. These are two broad categories for data management. The first one is about managing the data itself. So uh, looking at the data quality, the availability of the data, the timeliness, and so on. Now, in financial organizations, this aspect is usually the responsibility of the consumers or the data consumers. It's usually an IT role or a business function role. Now, as market data teams, we are more likely to be involved in managing usage and spend. Uh, and this is really what the presentation is going to be focusing about. So looking at how market data teams, what they can do and what they do uh, around usage and spend of reference data. Now, these two teams will try to communicate or will communicate, of course, in, the, in an organization. For example, data consumers or the business can ask the market data team about the cost of a particular data request. How much would this cost me? Um, is our usage compliant to licensing terms? Uh, I've got a test environment. How can I limit access to, to that? Or how can they report access to these things? Now, and also the market data team can and should you know, ask data consumers whether they need a particular uh, data point, maybe it's expensive, maybe it's not compliant. So there should be some communication going on between market data uh, and the business. The problem is uh, generally this communication is not very efficient. This is what we see because reference data is complex and there's lots of data to go through. Uh, traditionally, they are, it's managed in Excel spreadsheets, maybe an invoice payment, uh, just simple uh, scripts or simple manual intervention. So it's not very efficient. So we end up Again, being passive, um, waiting for the invoice, being slow in generating reports and data, and it's just not an efficient way of doing things. So what happens is the following. <clears throat> um, we have uh, uh, three different things that we've highlighted here. So high operational risk, the costs will increase, the usage can be non-compliant, we'll have low efficiency in communication, um, we can't allocate spend clearly, and we can't take decisions. Uh, so. Now, again, we'll try to shift or to change that dynamic. So before I go into the how, let's talk about why we should be doing this. The objective here are four of them. We, we would like to enhance the efficiency in the organization, be more transparent. Uh, we want to reduce our spend, of course. This is one of the main drivers. Not just reduce the spend initially, but keep it under control. Maintain this continuous feedback between the business and the IT teams. We uh, would like to enhance accountability internally, so be able to reconcile invoices, follow up on any recommendations, generate audit reports clearly and efficiently, and of course, we want to be uh, compliant. I think what you're really saying there is if you're not actively managing, you can get to the end of the month and get some very nasty surprises. Exactly, and key, you know, you'll, be, you'll get nasty surprises, you won't know why, it'll be hard to explain, it's post-fact, and so on. Now, by implementing those objectives, uh, again, the, the, the point here is to lower the, our operational risk, ensure compliance, 
increase our, the efficiency of our teams and improve our decision making. And this is really the crux of what we will be looking at in the next slide. So um, how do we do this? And again, these are the three main things. Firstly, tracking usage proactively is very important. So we need to understand what we're using, who's consuming what, uh, as in as close to real time as possible. Be able to track this, not passively at the end of the month, but really take a proactive approach to do that. To do this, as I mentioned, understand who's consuming the data, where it's originating from, where is it going, understand our benchmarks, uh, create alerts on abnormal usage if we have to, to uh, if something you know unusual happens, capture it before it's too late. Uh, the, the, the second line in the slide here is the, how this addresses our objectives. So by doing this, we'll be optimizing our spend, enhancing our efficiency, and ensuring our compliance. Now, of course, Xbon uh, fundamentally is built to be a real-time system. Uh, it is reliable. It is a modern technology stack that captures requests and calculates analytics in real time. Um, it will generate alerts on abnormal usage. Our clients use, use this very successfully, but also it can actively not just monitor, but block requests before they before it's too late. So if they're non-compliant, uh, we can capture those and block them before they reach um, their source. Also, it's important to be not just specific to a particular source or to a particular vendor. We need to be, if we're really looking at this from a holistic point of view, we need to cover uh, the vendors that we have in a, in, a, in a deep way, of course, but also be broad and to cover uh, as many vendors as we can, at least the top three providers here. Um, uh, it's important to not just, uh, again, track vendors, but also look into internal data sources as well. So any mastering systems, EDM platforms to help us address cost optimization, again, improve efficiency, accountability, and compliance. Now, on that side of things, Xmon is natively multi-vendor. Uh, we can onboard any reference data vendor uh, onto the system, uh, reconcile invoices, and we also have uh, partnerships in the industry around EDMs and caching systems, uh, the sources of data that will facilitate the integration for clients and make this uh, very easy and seamless. And the last best practice uh, here is to increase collaboration in the organization, make this communication as we saw earlier between the market data teams and the consumers of data or the users of data, very smooth, very efficient, repeatable, um, help them allocate costs, uh, forecast spend, um, and, uh, and really understand how data should be used. Xbon is very good at that. Uh, we have very powerful analytics that are built on demand that can be repeated. Our simulations are very precise and very powerful as well. So we can understand the impact of changes uh, in an organization. We've got dashboards. And the final thing I'll say about this is, to Mark's point earlier, the software is provided with a service, which we call the Xmon Insights. These are uh, analysts that are experts in uh, commercial models in reference data compliance uh, requirements for reference data, and they act as an extension of the client's team. So they will help add value, not just with the system, but also more broadly speaking in the industry. That's what I have uh, for the best practices to Clive. I hope that was useful. Yeah, I think that was a, that was a great overview. Uh, thank you very much, Amjad. Vitaly, coming to you uh, as somebody who's actually taken that step to really start actively uh, managing your uh, data and your uh, consumption of it, um, how important is to protect, proact proactively manage reference data for you? And why have you chosen to work with x one? Yes, uh, so thank you for the question. I mean, <clears throat> coming coming back to, to what Amjad actually mentioned, um, so... With X1, we are able to change our role in market data monitoring, right? From a passive to a, a more proactive role. And I mean, <clears throat> overview of our reference data usage is, is one of our most important parts um, in the regular cost monitoring. So being more efficient in this area helps us um, helps this organization greatly, to be honest. And um, looking to, to X1 specific, um, X1 provides us all the necessary functionalities so um, basically uh, looking into your data usage and on top of that um, with the Xmon Insights teams um, we are guided through the whole year um, um, according to our usage and also this teams gives us a lot of great helpful feedback um, along the way and of course um, 
this is of great value to us since um, this team knows the models across the vendors and uh, they actually act as an extension to, to our team to help us to understand and report and optimize our usage. Um, let me give you an example um, from, from our last year um, because I think it's a quite an, an, a good one. Um, with Xmon and, and also with the insights teams, um, we could identify one unusual spike in the early 2023 trace it back to its source and a specific date. And with those insights and with the support, uh, and, and in this case, we were able to avoid all the unneeded usage in the future. Yeah, I think understanding a, a real life use case like that really sort of helps set the scene as to the, the power of the product. And it's helping you to, uh, to manage that spend of what can be a very considerable spend as, uh, as we've discussed already. Is there any particular functionality um, that you find you know, really useful for, for you and the team? Yes, there are. Um, actually, there are two, but uh, maybe let me start with the first of that. Um, first of all, we, we actually use the simulation service, and um, then the service helps us to, to, to provide us a great forecast for new requirements that, that come into our organization. For example, last year, we used the service to simulate a potential change request and could identify the cost of the requirements even before the actual implementation, right? Um, so through these simulations, we were able to adjust the, the right parameters uh, even after the implementation of the new data requirement. And, and thus we stayed within the simulated cost range. So this is, this is really great. Um, on top of that, um, we used also the cost and usage explorer um, to obtain some assessment of the data fields and security types that we request, um, and also the particular comparison between the months. So knowing um, what, what uh, the adjustments and also the unexpected spikes were uh, between the months helps us in our daily work, right? Yeah, that's, uh, that's really good. Something I'd love to just roll back on a second. Um, you talked about the experience of the team at uh, TRG Screen and acting like an extension of yours. How much uh, interaction do you have the, with the team on a sort of daily, weekly basis? So um, I think we, we can talk about two main interaction points. So we have a more, more or less a quarterly um, catch up where we talk about several things that change. And but what I actually um, prefer is when we see something that is, is, is happening in the market or is happening to us, um, we can always come back to them and uh, talk to them directly. And, uh, and, and they give us a pretty, pretty extensive and detailed feedback and answers that, that already helps us even before we have our normal touch points. And how do, how do you see the landscape before and after? How how? You know, what has been the real value that you've driven out of using Xmon? And has it made a discernible difference to the uh, business at Metzler? I mean, it is. I mean, it's make it, it, it not even uh, had an increase in impact in the past, but it's also shaping, I think, uh, the, the whole data usage um, in, in the future. So, um, I mean, currently we are clearly focusing on optimizing data usage, um, but I think with all the great uh, capabilities that, that are coming to Xmon in, in the next years, um, we I think we can start to, to also make a more focus on a targeted comparison. And what I mean with that, uh, we can maybe someday compare also various vendors in the specific fields and identify potentially even across vendors. So um, I'm having having to answer this question, I would say it has provided great, uh, great, uh, great usage to us, and I'm actually looking forward to the, the future as well at the moment. That's uh, that's really, really helpful. I think to understand how the, it's really made a difference to you. Um, so you're talking about considering adding more vendors. Is that something that, given the flexibility of the platform, it should be fairly easy? Has that been your experience so far? I mean, uh, as, as I mentioned, currently we are mainly focused on, on our current data usage, and I think that's that's totally normal. And I think also looking to the market that that will be the normal case. Um, uh, but we want to to um, in at least in our some future iterations within our market data team, we want to target also um, these comparisons and and do a little bit more on, on our side as well. 
Um, but so far, I think we need to do first the good and great housekeeping in the beginning, and next, I think, explore other capabilities as well. No, that's fantastic. Very, very interesting insights. We've got a number of questions coming in um, that I'd quite like to get to sooner rather than later, if that's okay. Um, so first off, we've got one coming on the uh, chat here. Um, it's saying, where in the model is return on investment on spend monitored? Is that another team role? Uh, and it may not be the need to reduce spend as usage increases. So um, suppose, Amchad, could you maybe uh, touch on that, touch on that, please? Sure, Clive. So was the question around the return on investment and whether this was an one-off or continuous? A continuous spend, how's it monitored? Is that another team or role or is that something that is done as that sort of managed service part and in collaboration with the client? Absolutely. So um, the way uh, the way we the way we look into this is uh, is as follows. So when we initially when we set up the system for a client, of course, we will look into uh, the usage. We will look into the past invoicing, the past usage, and uh, as it's accruing as well throughout the month. This will help us provide initial initial set of recommendations to uh, optimize the costs and, and all the things that we mentioned earlier. So transparent reports and all of these things. Now, this initial phase, we don't we don't have a go live date. We have what we call a time to value date. So how quickly can clients get value out of the system? Um, and with Xmon, we are very, very quick, and we have many clients, and uh, perhaps even Vitaly can, can, can talk to that in a bit, but our time to value is really short. What does that mean? That means that clients rolling out Xmon will get value out of the system very quickly. The ROI will be very high very quickly. Um, they will understand better the usage. They'll be able to reduce their spend, keep it uh, reduced, and understand the impact of any changes to bring, uh, to bring that under control. Now, That's... go ahead. Uh, now, moving on from this, and the reasons why our clients remain and stay with us for years on end, not just as a one off exercise, is because, uh, again, to those points, uh, it's a continuous, it's a proactive management platform. It is not just about a one off exercise. We really look at this on a proactive basis, and we help market data teams or whatever team that's looking at this in the organization, be in a control position, understand the impact of changes. So the return on investment is a continuous one and it goes on for years and years. It's not just a one-off exercise. Thank you. Vitaly, uh, Amjad said you would expand on that for us, uh, which is very kind of him. Um, if you could take up that, uh, could, could take that up, that'd be great. Maybe, maybe not talking to specifics on, on some ROI numbers, but um, I think as soon as you have um, all the required uh, data in place in, within Xmon, and I think the, the first returns come within the, the first days and weeks, you actually experience what's X, what can Xmon help you and where Xmon can help you. So already gaining the, the whole transparency across the data usage and talking to the insights teams, um, you will at least in our case, we could deliver the first um, improvements within uh, the, the first weeks, actually. So um, even even after that, uh, the, the, the next data usages were already already um, adjusted ac according to the, the feedback that we received and according to the to the things that we could see actually in, a, in an application. Um, so without any specific numbers, we can see at least the first improvements from the first month after the implementation. Yeah, that's quick. That's, uh, that must be very, very valuable. And also, as a sponsor of building in a new platform like this, it's very good to be able to go back to your key stakeholders and show return on investment quickly and how things are uh, how things are improving. Which, yeah, I think that's that's very, very powerful. Moving on to the next question, um, here's one I think I'm going to ask you to to tackle, Mark, if that's okay. Certainly initially. Um, so we're a rather large organization and aligning stakeholders to implement change is not always easy. Uh, what's your experience dealing with large firms? And if so, what's your view of any best practices you've learned with interacting with those large and what can be complex global organizations? Okay, uh, I'll, I'll try to take a first um, more general stance at that question. Um, 
obviously the thought often is the larger the organization, the larger the market data spent and the larger the, uh, the, the, the reference data usage is. So the higher the absolute potential returns we, we, we are looking at. Now, that is a, that is a high level view. Um, what, what I think we like to do is um, our, our, our first point of contact often is the market data team and larger organizations tend to have a uh, well-established, very professional, large market market data team with with specialism within the team. And it is these market data teams that have the contacts with their internal businesses for whom the market data professionals are making the difference. They are an absolute key player. So we want to partner with those with those market data professionals and help them uh, to be very successful in their jobs in helping uh, their business. So um, the way the way we the way we normally do that is to to really understand what are the challenges uh, they are facing. So. It's actually on this slide. It's the it's answering and addressing the questions: the what, the why, and the how. And I think uh, if we then go back to the specifics for for the 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 Exmon product and the Exmon service, um, Amjad has has touched upon those. Um, I don't think they materially difference between smaller, mid size or very large size organizations, uh, complexity maybe increases a little bit, but I, it is not something that the Exmon product and the Exmon team can't address. And maybe Amjad, you wanna yeah. elaborate on that a little bit further? Sure, sure, Mark, thank you for that. I mean, this uh, everything you said is, is spot on. Um, larger organizations, uh, they're just larger, but they it, it have the same problems as, as any organization, any other organization. They'll have the same issues. They want to achieve the same things. It's just bigger, so there's more processes around things. Now, practically, the way we approach this and uh, what we what we try to avoid to do, and again, this comes up to the to the onboarding or to the implementation, is start somewhere, start small, and then build up on that. So go up gradually. We don't have to onboard everybody at the same time. Um, start selling the, the 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 value internally on a smaller, maybe more controllable section of it, and then build from there. I think this is also uh, you know, how we would look into that. Uh, we've seen this approach, and we have Xmon deployed on organizations of all different sizes. It could be, uh, you know, a, a smaller hedge fund all the way to a very large uh, investment organization. So we know it, and we've seen it. And again, to, I think to the point of the question. What is the difference between a large organization? I think really the intricacy here is how to navigate uh, there, but perhaps start small, build up the value, show the value quickly again, as we mentioned early on, and then and then move on from there. Thanks, Amjad. Vitaly, I saw you nodding away quite uh, quite a lot while Mark and Amjad were speaking. Um, I'd love to hear some points and thoughts from you around that, if that's possible. Um, yeah, of course. I mean, um, what, I, what I was thinking about is actually um, the, the great advantage that that, that uh, Xmon uh, provides, uh, uh, at least provided to us in our organization. Uh, it was, I mean, looking into the market, you always see a lot of different initiatives that you can drive in, in order to improve your market data <clears throat> usage in the end. But all of this uh, of these initiatives, they take a long a lot of time. Um, even even months, sometimes even years, until they actually give you any any kickback to your organization. And and when when you look into this to these initiatives, sometimes you don't even know if they had any benefit in the end for you because they consumed a lot of cost along the way, right? So what what I really liked about and I think I this is also goes back to, to the question before in the ROI um, is that the the, the the thing that we could actually achieve from from the beginning on uh, the first improvements. So with with the X one, we could see the, the improvement from day one. As soon as we have implemented our data sources, we could see the improvement day on day one, and um, and 
this is this is uh, I think one of the advantages at least that that gives us the, the whole transparency across the all the data usage that we have in the end. So um, this is what what really resonated with me when when I heard also Mark and, and Amjad speaking, and um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Charlie. Um, let's go on to the next question. Um, so, sorry, I'm reading this, so if I'm looking down, I do apologize. Uh, does the system report pass through attributes, for example, third party data sold through a data aggregator, which is bound by licensing terms? I'm guessing that might be one for you, Amjad, to kick off. Sure. This is a question we get uh, actually frequently. Um, can we use XMON to understand where the data is coming from, but also help us understand whether we're compliant? Some clients say, you know, ask us a, a similar version of that question is, can we have a report on uh, third party data attributes? Uh, because we need to be, again, on top of things and understand our compliance standpoint. We need to know what to report, what to use precisely. Uh, generally speaking, without, without this, level of detail, it's almost a finger in the air. So we think we're using this or we get a call because we're using, uh, somebody's told us we're using that. So we need to be proactive about this. And XMOC collects a lot of data. And I think fundamentally um, uh, there's er, everything is, is in the system. We can and we do not just generate reports for usage for audit and compliance reports saying this is what we've used over the last six months 12 months and this and we're reporting this clearly factually and also precisely um, but also uh, what the system can do is create alerts so if a consumer is sending a request that is bound by certain compliance requirements somebody will know it very quickly so rather than being surprised at the end of the month hey you know, this just happened and we need to deal with it. No, we can know it very quickly before the facts or before the end of the month and deal with it here and there. So I think this also feeds back into this proactive approach of tracking uh, usage, understanding usage, building reports. If we need the data, that's absolutely fine. We do need the data, the business requires it, and but we need to report on it. Absolutely fine. In which case, we do those reports using using Xmon. Precisely, we know exactly why we need the data, where it's going to, and 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 how much we need to, or what do we need to report. But also, if to avoid surprises, organizations don't like surprises, especially not around compliance uh, and audits. Uh, create alerts if if we know we don't want to use a particular data attributes because of compliance requirements, we can do this in Xmon and capture it uh, before it becomes a problem. That's uh, that's really, really helpful. But Vital Vitaly, coming back to you, something you said earlier about uh, an actual uh, use case where you saw a spike, um, is that something that you're now utilizing the uh, the alerting functionality to um, to see where things might be occurring where you wouldn't necessarily catch them with a the naked eye? I think our technical setup is a little bit structured differently in our organizations, so we didn't have um, the, the, the proactive alerting in the moment. But what we see is, is in the end, um, after after the end of the month, what happened to our, to our um, daily data usage. And with that, we saw um, directly um, the spike. And actually, this this uh, the topic came came not only from us; it came also from the insights team. So they already contacted us even before the the month uh, closed. Um, so we had an issue here. So something happened that we uh, weren't observing in, in the last couple of months. And we work together on, on, on the topic. So we actually triggered or tackled this this kind of spike from two different angles in, in, in that case. Now that's that's great. And that leads me on very nicely to the next question. You touched on the insights team. Mark, can I come up to you for this one? And uh, the question is, can you explain in a bit more detail what Xmon Insights actually delivers for clients? Um Xmon Insights, which which is really the the the, the managed service um, element around uh, the product that that is being delivered. So, um, if you remember my my quick overview, the different services that we offer, this holistic platform, the core and the center of which is your uh, uh, optimized spend, the the contract uh, and and spend. 
yeah, hub or, or centralized core of our platform. Um, uh, there is a wrapper around it. What, what, what we see in the industry is a trend that more and more uh, of our end user clients, the firms, are looking to outsource what they call non-core activities. And the reason is there is a shortage of talent in our industry globally. That's a subject not for today's webinar, but often spoken about. We could do a whole nother webinar just on that topic quite easily. Absolutely. Um, and, and I won't drag us down there right now, but back to your question. Thank you. <laughs> back to your question. What you want is, is a quick service. You want to understand, what am I looking at? What is the data telling me? And if you don't always have those, uh, um, those resources internally, because people are so busy, we have so much to keep track of, then it is fantastic that you can go to your vendor. And in, and in the case, the example given, where the vendor, in this case, the, um, the insights team at, at, at Axmon has already spotted a spike in your data, contacts you proactively, has analyzed what has happened and has an explanation ready for you. And that is really what the Insights team is about. It's an extended service. If you choose not to do everything on the data analytics yourself, that you turn to the team and say, hey, listen, I want you to proactively manage for me the data consumption that we have. That's great. I think that's really sort of rounded out the conversation from the experiences that Vitaly's had to... Uh... You know what, what? What else is what else is possible? I've got one quick, well, one hopefully quick last question because we're coming up to the uh, the end of the session, and I'll put this to Amjad before we can just go around the table and ask for some final thoughts. Um, so, the question is: with the recent uh, acquisition, are there any plans for integration? If so, can you talk through any elements, please? <clears throat> of course. I mean, it's early days. Of course, uh, it's very very early days still. What we so of course Xmon as a product will remain as a product independently sellable. So clients that require tracking or understanding of reference data that is available. Of course, here you have a much wider suite of products around market data management. Now, again, it is early days, but uh, what we'll be looking at in terms of potential integrations is really making it the life easier for for our users. So uh, things like uh, more operationally uh, simplifying operational tasks. Um, if if something is loaded in one system, don't have it loaded in the other at the same time. So some there will be some trivial things that make sense to integrate quickly initially. Uh, the reporting aspect of things is, is another one. Um, why see a report in Xmon when we can see it in Optimize Insights as well, for example. So there will be some discussions around that, but um, uh, there's more exciting things to come. We're at this point at a very exciting stage. So looking at the functionality and in integrating all of these things. Again, early days, but um, when once we start understanding these things a bit more and 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 and, and have the details of that, we'll of course be we be be out with those to our clients. That's great. I sort of explaining the uh, the potential opportunities that will be rolled out. I think that's uh, that's very helpful. If I could quickly go around the room um, and just ask for some final thoughts um, around what we've been discussing and some yeah two three headline uh, headline items that would be great. Vitaly, could I could I start with you, sir? Um, yes, of course. First of all, thank you for having me on this webinar to, to this morning. Um, my, my quick thoughts on that um, is, 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 I think, quite easy. Uh, Xmon is, is one of our greatest value applications and services that we use in our organization. That is an uh, extension of our whole market data team. And uh, with, with Xmon, we, we gain a lot of transparency and um, potentials that we can identify from day one as we have implemented Xmon. That's brilliant. Thank you. Um, Amjad, one from you, please. Thank you, Clive. Uh, thank you, uh, of course, Vitalia uh, as well and everybody. Um, but, well, final thoughts from my side is, look, we're here to help. We understand this. We understand the pains. We've come from that space. Um, we've got the technology to help you do this. So feel free to, don't hesitate to let us know if there's anything we can do. 
Um, we've seen a lot and we understand how complex these things are, um, but keen to, keen to, yeah, keen to work uh, or to help uh, anyone that, that's looking for them. So that's great. Thanks, Amjad. Mark, um, just from yourself. Yeah, very quickly. Otherwise, I might start to repeat what has already been said by Vitaly. No, we don't want that. Amjad before, but we have been partnering uh, with Expansion for many, many years. We know the product. There is a reason why. Uh, why we asked Expansion to join the TFG Screen family. It's um, the Xmont product is a fantastic service. Um, reference date expenses are increasing very, very fast globally. Return on investment, as we heard from Vitaly, is, is quick, very quick. So uh, trust us, we can help you uh, in your use of Xmon, if you're ever considering using a service like that, uh, buy, don't build, and you get a very quick return on your investment. That's great. Well, many thanks to everybody for joining today. I'd really like to thank Vitaly, Mark, and Anjad for some you know, really, really good insights as to uh, what's going on in the market data use space. Um, if you'd like any further information, Obviously, please connect with the team at TRG Screen. And just once again, thank you, gentlemen, and thank you, everybody, for, uh, for joining us today. And enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Everyone. Thank you. It was a real pleasure. Bye. Bye. Good, to, good to talk to you all. Thank you.